two of the guys that work for Disney graduated from Michigan, and I was talking to them uh, in the office today. I was like, how you feeling? And they're like, I'm nervous. I think it's going to be close. And I was like, eh, I think you guys might be more fine than you're leading yourself on to be. But I mean, they make... They are stupid mistake prone. It's kind of crazy. I mean, yeah. Like, I don't think you can do that if another team is playing at their best. And I don't think Bama was playing great. I think Bama legitimately played out of their mind against Georgia. And that was their peak of the season, like, yeah. to be honest. I I think I would agree. I I mean, I thought Alabama might do better in the playoffs because they always tend to ramp up for whatever reason. I feel like mm-hmm. Saban is like a, typically a very good uh, coach in the playoffs. And I do think they had a better chance on that final play than people gave them out uh, to be because clearly there was from I thought somebody on Twitter broke it down, but like that wasn't a design QB run. The snap was a little or was mistimed and a little off to the point where they couldn't hand it off. Because mm-hmm. you could tell like the blockers went out left. There were two blockers there, and I was looking at it, I was like, why didn't he throw the ball to the to the guy going out? He had a better chance of getting in than he did. But he didn't. He just went for the run. I was like, uh ah, well, something went wrong. It is what it is. Yeah. It, it just it looked weird from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, the the one good thing for Washington is that like they they can throw the ball super well, but I will give them like as much as I'm worried about Michigan's mistakes, like Washington's defense is just so up and down as well that it's like, I don't know how this game will go at all because Washington lets people back into a lot of games and then they'll randomly seal you off. Like, so we'll see, but it'll probably be close because Washington, I don't think they've really had a game against a a great team that I can think of where they've like not made it close. I would rather have seen Michigan play Washington and Alabama play Texas in the first round uh, than the other way. Because then I feel like we would have actually, like, I don't know. I, maybe it's just nitpicking. But just, like, I don't know. If having Washington and Texas play each other versus, like, the two conferences that, like, we know are, like, cream of the crop in college football, at least, or so we assume. I yeah. Don't, then, like, that way you at least dispel all the rumors. You dispel yeah, all the rumors. Yeah, I mean, man, it doesn't really matter anymore anyways because Pac-12 is going to blow up, so. Mm-hmm. And the Big 12 is blowing up. Like, losing Texas and Oklahoma, the Big 12 is just going to suck forever, like, for being honest. Yeah. I don't see the Big 12 ever winning one now. Like, it's at least going to take 10 or 15 years for them to get or maybe just a lucky draw one year. But, and with going to 12 teams, like, dude, if there's going to be three SE or four SEC teams in there now, from here on out, I think it's it's so much trouble for teams. Because now you're at a point where Georgia doesn't even need to win every game to get in. No, I think SEC teams with two losses might actually get in at this point. Yeah, and, like, Georgia low-key is going to come back even crazier next year because they're going to be upset. They're losing a really good tight end, though, so that's going to hurt them. But they're going to fix their D-line because their D-line is the only reason they were human this year. Like, I'm serious. That D-line just sucked. Like, they their corners are crazy. Like, if their corners get another shot next year to actually show what they're made of, they, they go so hard. It's just their D-line. I just know it's going to be a rough year as a Florida Gator fan because we lost everybody in the transfer portal. I mean, yeah, they just... Everything that we had going for us is, like, gone, more or less. We're in so much trouble. Yeah. They're... You're going to struggle, yeah. We invested so much in our stadium, too, like, two years ago. Like, to revamp and, like, start, like, recruiting better players. And it's just... uh, Yeah. You you, got to get one good class. Like, one really good class to build a solid foundation on. Yeah. And if you want cloud, you're going to Colorado now. So, like. Maybe. Colorado's recruiting class sucks. Again. I mean, it does. But, like, you're going to. You're guaranteed to get money if you go there. Oh, yeah. They. Well, you can get paid more going to Texas. Like, pick a team in Texas. You'll get paid stupid money. 
Those oil dudes don't play. They got money even Dion's now finding. <laughs> fair. Fair. They're oil men, which kind of leads us in. <laughs> I was gonna say, great great segue into the yeah. topic. Uh well let me Oil form- has mad money, bro. Let me let me formally kick this off. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the crossover podcast, episode one oh seven. Hope you enjoyed the football talk intro. We didn't even touch the NFL, which is the more interesting part in my mind right now. Cause that yeah. oh my god, True. there's so much going on there. But we'll get into that later. We got a more important topic, a uh, little bit of a heavier one to start off with. Uh, Riot Games has apparently, via a leak from Jacob Wolf, uh, decided that it is time to open up the LOL esports ecosystem to third parties again for the first time since what, like 2018 in an official capacity if they let like actual teams play? Uh, mm. I can't think of, actually, well, no, 2017, I don't even think I had it. When was the last time there was a third party, like actual tournament that wasn't like an Asia Games like tied to the Olympics, like something where like your team was allowed to go if you qualify. Well, this recent G two, like, oh, like a no, four, like, not like, for like, fun. A, yeah, a not for yeah, fun. Yeah. Like no stipulations. Then, you go and you. When play was the last I am? I don't even know. It wasn't a thing. Whenever I followed, I've never, I've never in my life seen a third party League of Legends tournament. Because I am used to be pretty big, but Couldn't well, tell. depending on who you talk to. Couldn't tell you. But the drama is that it comes at the uh, the moral cost of taking Saudi Arabian money because the Saudis mm-hmm. are going to be the ones that apparently they're shopping this out to via well, I, I don't know what the end or the conglomerate is called of the uh, Crown Prince or whatever his name is. Uh, the for those that don't know the significance behind that, this is also the people re- responsible for the killing of American journalist uh, Jamal. Kish- oh, why am I forgetting his last name? Jamal Khashoggi, I think it was pronounced, uh, or they were tied to it, as well as just a bunch of like moral, morally sketchy things that come with their specific group. Uh, LBGTQ people, obviously, they're. This is not great of a announcement, but. It is an inevitability uh, because if you have not been following the sports world in any capacity, uh, whether it's F1, golf, uh, WWE, UFC, soccer. Um, soccer, I can't think of, I cannot think of a single sport at this point that hasn't been touched by Saudi mm-hmm. money as they tried to, you know, they're one of the only people left that's like really operating in the green right now. U.S. was heavily reliant upon tech and we're struggling right now. They've got oil money. And as venture capitalist money leaves the scene and every and like the ad sales market shrinks, you know, you start looking for other spots and the Saudis are the ones that got the money. So Riot, it, it's not, not confirmed. We don't know for certain, but it looks like they're getting into bed with the Saudis. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean... They have the one thing that still hasn't run out, which is Earl, but <laughs> you can't run out of it really, or we'll all, we'll need it for well, a while. Yeah. Have and, it <laughs> yeah. And it was twenty seventeen, by the way, was the last IEM. Wow. And that's the last thing I can think of that was a legitimate, like intense like at least teams tried. Because yeah. I know, like, Flash Wolves 101 and TSM 101, so people don't call them real, like, international attorneys, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it was the MSI before MSI was cool. And that is, like, those were pretty good. I enjoyed them. But they were also, like, not backed by this, so it kind of makes it weird. Because I was going to, originally my thought was, like, a third-party tournament, that's kind of neat. Some of them have been fun. You can get different announcers. You get a different idea on the game. But it is kind of tougher when it's backed by a, a group that you don't have the most faith in, I guess, or good faith in. Yeah. Like, I know, like, the Qatar World Cup was an interesting event. Yeah. So Yeah, it was. Some teams might have, like, some teams legitimately might not be allowed to go because of logos. Like, if they refuse to change their logo. So... And didn't they had a tournament 
it wasn't it Iran? Somebody had a tournament where they banned certain female characters from the game. Mm-hmm. Like they no, they've done that in the Middle East, yeah. So Yeah, it's been a known thing for a while. I don't feel like Riot would let them do that, but then again, at the same time, money talks. It was certain walks. skins. Yeah. And there were certain skins that they could run on champs to get around it, so that was the logic. But yeah, you can... There are things that they'll ban. But who knows what'll happen? I mean, it's going to be interesting because I really, if you think about it, like in some people I've talked to, uh, it only seems like NA people really are the ones, uh, for lack of a better term right now, that would grandstand on it. You know what I mean? I can't think of anything else to say. So, like, we're the only ones who care. So I think most EU teams would probably go. Like, just thinking about it, I am pretty confident neither of the Asian teams care. I mean, Cloud9 or, like, would go. regions. Cloud9, would team, they? Cloud9 team Liquid have already gone to events with the, the Saudi groups. Oh, there really? Was a, there was a $42 million event last year called Gamers 8 and Counter-Strike. Ah. The finals, I think, was C9 versus Fnatic. So they've, yeah, already, they've so already sent go. teams. Yeah. Yeah. So they'll go. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to go. Like, I think the only people who won't go to these things slash hate that it's happening is probably just going to be some of the media people. Media and uh, broadcast people. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think they care. <laughs> I don't think they'll care at all. Like, And honestly, I don't know if I'd go if you're a media person who said the wrong thing because there's a lot of controversy around that American journalist. Yep. Uh, the soccer one who went Yeah. this past year and died there. Yep. A lot of controversy around that. I and I, that I, was in Qatar, though, to be clear. Yeah. So I I don't know if I like if if somebody threw the I don't think I would like just isolating it to the moral level of like would you feel comfortable going? I mm-hmm. don't think I would personally. Yeah. At least not I mean a- I know some people who go to Dubai like for vacation. Yeah. Oh, so, I know a few people as well. Yeah, that they love it there. That it's like, yeah, okay. But it's look, we're we're at a crossroads in the scene, and I, mm-hmm. I already put this out on Twitter, and I'll say it again here. I wish we didn't have to take their money, and to be clear, we don't have to. But Riot Games, like, here's the mental thing you got to go through because people are gonna try and look at this from the moral argument, but the moral argument doesn't matter whenever it's ultimately Riot Games say they get offered a two hundred million dollar check. Like that completely made up number. Riot Games gets offered two hundred million dollars for mm-hmm. the Saudis to run this tournament, and all they have to do is like give them the IP and like you know help out a little yeah. bit. Riot then ha- informs their shareholder when you know they're letting internal meetings know when you're uh, disclosing your financials to Tencent. They're like, hey, we passed up on two hundred million dollars because we don't like them. And they're going to look at the stakeholders and owners are going to look at them and be like, you're fired. Yeah. Bye-bye. You're not turning down $200 million for this Mm -hmm. company. Like that, there's no scenario where you say no to that money. So Mm -hmm. it, you, you really have to consider the economics of all this where it's like, I don't think people at Riot at this point are going to have much of a choice. They're gonna have to take the money out of obligation to their shareholders, and that's just hyper capitalism at work. And if well, you can't, we can't change that system. So that's gonna end up being what happens over and over and over again. And ten cent, I don't think really cares what, no. like what they are doing over there. I, I honestly think ten cent just turns a blind eye. I mean, they are. Ten cent comes from a country that views another country. Not as a country. Yeah. So they have their own skeletons in the closet that they they kind of probably just look at what they do and go, okay, that's their business. And they're that kind of, you know, group. And yeah. so I don't think Riot can just like, yeah, I'm with you. I don't think they can just look it up and go, yeah, we don't feel like doing that. We don't want to do that because we don't agree with them on these points. And they list them all because Tensa is just going to go, don't care, don't care, don't care. You turned down a lot of money, though. So, yep, yep. <laughs> they're just gonna they're just gonna get rid of it. them. It's one of those where people need to realize this now. And luckily, we have other sports to point at 
as mm-hmm. clear examples here. And I want to point out Rory McIlroy, who today released a statement. If you want it, it's on my Twitter. I already quote retweeted it. He mm-hmm. had to issue, didn't have to, but two years ago, he stuck his neck out for the PGA of America. So for those that don't know the golf industry, the Saudis came in and said, hey, you guys might run the only like major golf league in the world in the PGA Tour, but we have unlimited money and we're going to steal a bunch of your top players and we're just going to form our own tour. That's for fun. Yeah. And these players are still going to go to the majors. They're still going to do everything else, but we're just going to be a direct competitor to you to the point where you're either going to give in and give us a seat at the table with you because we want to be at the table with you or you know, we will bankrupt you because they have unlimited funds and the PGA did not. Despite having no... like. LIV had no standing in the space whatsoever. Mm-hmm. It literally just formed out of thin air. So yep. then... They still don't have a realistic what, money strategy, do they? The PGA? No. So, no, the LIV. <laughs> oh, no. I mean... It, well, no. Their, their plan is to just, bull. They have... Yeah, stupid amount. Luna! Zip it! They so what happened was they bought out a ton of top talent. Like people thought, oh, mm-hmm. one or two people would go. No, a yeah. bunch of the big names went, and they took the money and were like, "Yeah, I'm going. I don't care." Like this wasn't a like Messi or anybody else going to Saudi Arabia where you're not playing against the best competition. It's like you can play less golf and then you still play in the majors and the best competition. Like it was a no brainer for most people yeah. that got it because that's like. Even though they're millionaires, this is money that takes them to a whole other status as well. And like yeah, secures no. generational wealth that their families will never have to worry ever again. Yeah. And LIV was successful in that matter. Now, did were they ever profitable? No. Were the events all that good? No. But the point was they they made a dent. So you had a bunch of players that came out, mostly American or like really diehard European players who were like Fuck anybody else that tries to, you know, interfere with the PGA. The PGA, despite them being a monopoly on the scene, like, they've treated us well. They've done these things. Yes, there's things that we need to get better at. But, like, it is PGA. And fuck anybody who takes money uh, from the Saudis and going to live. And that went on for two years. And then Mm -hmm. last year, it comes out, hey, the PGA and LIV are in talks of merging. And all those people that stuck their necks out for the PGA Tour immediately got fucked entirely. Because then it's like, yeah. oh, you PGA never fucking cared about you. Not once. Because yeah. as always, it's about the money. And always has been and always will be. Mm-hmm. And now, Rory McIlroy came out with a statement today saying, you know, the guys that took the money for live, smart move on your part. I might not agree with the politics of live and the Saudis, but you got your bag and, you know, we're going to be merging and it is what it is. And it's like, no, he's just wearing egg on his face now. And that yeah. should be a warning to every single content creator, fan, broadcast personality, everything else. Do not try and virtue signal this situation and try and go the high road if you still want to be in the space. Because you will get carved out. And you have to make an active choice pretty much now on where you stand on this. Because if you want to avoid Saudi money and be on the, you know, the high ground of politics and everything else there, you pretty much have to leave the esports space. Because that money's coming in, whether you like it or not, in many different facets. And if you don't want to be involved with one portion of it, you can't be involved with all of it. So you got to pick and choose here. Like, are you okay with it or are you not? Because you can't yeah. just ignore that one World Cup tournament and then just support everything else whenever, say, like a fanatic gets bought out by the Saudis and then what? Oh, so you're fine with being in a league with a team that's owned by them, but you're not fine with the tournament? Like, no, you can't be selectively outraged by this. You either have to be all or nothing to have any sort of solid ground. So make that's fine if you don't want to be. But yeah. make your choice. And don't put yourself in a position where you have to backpedal the entire time. And it's going to be really difficult for people to avoid them because 
they have the kind of money where they could legitimately host the worlds there. Oh, just yeah. through their sheer amount of money, they don't even need to be a major region. Like they could just look at Tencent and say, "How much you want? Blank check. You tell me. We want to host one of your tournaments." And they'd probably give in if we're being honest. Oh, absolutely. Like it's stupid money because what they were offering Lyft players was like NBA maxes. Mm -hmm. It was crazy money. It was stupid. It was like baseball money almost. Oh, it was no, easily for the top players. It was baseball yeah, money. It was baseball money, and it's kind of tough because it's like, yeah, you want to sit there and you want to have your own personal way of thinking. You don't want to buy into it. Uh, Carlos is probably going to be a really big part of all oh, this. Fucking Christ! Merger. I can't stand that guy. And still. it's going to be just one of those like. I don't know what you do because every company is bending the knee because they don't know what to do because they're an esports winner. So they're all just going, well, we have no choice. We need the money. And they're doing it. Yep. So it makes you wonder what what is going to happen because it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't see them outlasting this. No, because we're like people need to understand we're not even close to the bottom of esports winner. We are nowhere close to the end of this. And if you think that yeah. people, like, put yourself in the shoes of a CEO of one of these teams that currently writing's on the wall, like Sentinels, for example, you're losing $700,000 a month. You yeah. can only keep this up for so long. And somebody comes in and is like, hey, I got you. Plus some. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Everybody gets a 100K bonus on top of this. Now what? Yeah. Now, now what do you do? Like, do, are you... Because if you're that boss, you're... Okay, it's like, okay, oh, no, I'm going to take the moral high ground. I'm not going to do that. It's like, well, you're then going to cost 20-some people or however many employees you have. They're going to be out of a job. Yep. So you're fucking over other people's lives. I'm not saying I would make that choice. I would never join... I would never be in a position where my company's losing that much fucking money in the first place. Mm -hmm. To be very clear... I would do ever, like I feel like I'm at least decently smart enough to like try and like avoid those situations but like you don't until you were in that situation I don't think anybody can rightfully say it and Sharpie point out in, in chat it's really easy to take the high road as a bystander when a 7 to 9 figure deal isn't dangling in front of your face. Yep. When the lives of 20 other people and their jobs and their families and everything else that you have, you have to go to bed knowing that you are, your moral compass is going to cost them their jobs and their family and their well-being in a market mm -hmm. where they might not be able to find a job easy. That's not and an easy choice. If this is your dream and you've been wanting to do esports your whole life and they give you like the even the smallest inkling, they just start planting the seed of like, we can pay for you to have generational wealth. Just let us own some of it. You know, that's it. Like that's going to creep in quick if you're failing, like, and you're struggling right now. Cause it's not just like, you know, people keeping their jobs. Cause there are going to be people who are worried about that, but it's also what's pushing you is like, you want to be able to have a profitable business, take care of your family forever. And they're offering that. Yeah. Like that's dumb money. And it's kind of tough not to take it. Like I could see their, for fun tournament, whatever they're trying to create, becoming one of the like most intense tournaments because it'll probably have a bigger yeah. prize pool than worlds. Yeah. <laughs> like like teams are gonna be carving this out of their skin. Like MSI might be due because of this tourney. I I mean I'm curious to see how they reorganize the calendar year. Yeah. I think you cause... move MSI like assuming this is gonna be the case, you move MSI to the beginning of the year. Not well yeah. not beginning, beginning, but like you do a winner, a spring, and a summer split and msi becomes the winter tournament this becomes the spring tournament and then worlds mm -hmm. is fall like i think that's the path they ultimately go down if i had to guess because i don't even care dude if i if we're going there to play t1 and like jdg i'm going there as an lcs team one seed like i'm gonna go there and i'm gonna hope that i somehow win this tourney because that amount of money for hope like, you're probably sitting there going, dude, this is, like, five years of my salary right now. Yeah. If we win this. Like, that's stupid money, bro. You're probably trying out of your mind 
hoping that you somehow get lucky and RNG win it. Like, I mean, that's a lot of cash. It is. And, like, again, just to keep reiterating this, because I know yeah. parts of this could potentially get clipped and taken out of context. For Ni- sure. Neither sure. one of us is okay with the morals of, of what Saudi Arabia brings. It is just a acknowledgement of the reality that the money's coming in and there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. And no amount of outrage, no amount of support is going to make a difference at this point. The money is too... The the Neom deal you could refuse back in 2019 because while the scene was bleeding money, it was at least in still a, a better spot. Mm-hmm. Now they're not at that point. And I can hear the voice in the back of my head of Monte Cristo and Thorin and Richard Lewis being like, well... You shouldn't have gotten your fucking self in there in that situation in the first place. We all agree. We all agree and understand that. But you can't change the past now. And dumb decisions are dumb decisions. And yes, those people should probably be out of the space for making those decisions in the first place. I agree. And should they get bailed out and paid by the Saudi government for those bad decisions that they made? No, they should not. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. And we're none of us from the outside in or in a position to do anything about it. Yeah. And that's and just, just, that's dude, life. Good businessmen. Like not, I know I could get clipped and they could just yeah. jump clip this, but they, bro, they literally got told, Hey, we don't want your money a few years ago. And they just sat around and went, okay. And they just waited and waited. And then something happened where he started to fall and went, Hey, you want to now? Yep. <laughs> Everybody went, yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> they were like sick. <laughs> I mean, that they were doing the same thing with like, uh, what was it? It was becoming a meme during the bear market. Yep. Like there were random Saudi dudes. Well, at least for crypto's bear market, not like US stocks. But there were like yeah. just randomly you'd go to bed and you'd wake up and something would have pumped like 200% in a night. Not just because it's a crypto, but because some dude in the Saudis like was just like, eh, screw it. We'll see what happens. And yep. just market bot because they have so much money. <laughs> like it's, it's crazy, dude. It's nuts. And I, I'm real I'm really, really curious to to watch how people navigate and react to this because it's gonna be fascinating. Having just gone oh, yeah. through this with golf, it's like I like I know every side that's coming. And I'm just, well, it's like, I, you know what I really should do? I should create a bingo card of just things that will happen during this time. And we just start crossing them out one by one and just start going down the list. And over the next three years, we eventually get bingo in some capacity. Saddest bingo card of all time. Oh, the most morally bankrupt yeah. like one ever. And like a, a really sad indication of like where it's at, but like, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what else you say to it. It 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 sucks that we're here, but we're here. Welcome. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just kind of one of those. It is what it is, moments almost because I'm pretty sure from what I've been reading that LDC, LPL, and LCK are going to be willing to go to this type of thing. Yeah, and. Maybe LEC decides not to. Maybe I'm wrong. But it looks like they're going to just send it. And LCS could be the only one left standing. And I don't think every LCS team is willing to actually say no, to be honest. I don't think so either. At all. So, especially with that amount of money on the line. Like, I just don't think it's going to be won. I mean, it didn't work for the Live Tour. And even, like, I mean, Pat McAfee his show talked about this all the time they would in the same show talk about how yes what qatar is doing having workers die all the time building these world cup stadiums is bad and they go but that saudi money's speaking to those live guys in the world cup group he was like it's just speaking you can't beat them and then ty would like make some joke about you know how they're actually killing a lot of people though and like it would be a joke but it's not really a joke it's yeah. like you, you, you say it at, you say it out of lightness and like hoping that there's no retaliation against you for saying it but yeah. you feel the need to point it out yeah yeah so it, it's kind of just like dang 
I mean, they're in a little bit of hot water right now, too, with the, the whole Jimmy Kimmel and Epstein list thing, which, by the way, another phenomenal. Yeah. I'm sure the YouTube algorithm loves bringing that up. Yeah, they're <laughs> people are saying they're in hot water. They can take it. I mean, I can't, I know. I can't comment on much, obviously, because it's all like internal. Uh, yeah, it's all. But it, it was just it's interesting to watch the media between all of this play out. Yeah, because it's silly because. I highly doubt Kim will actually sues a guy in company. Like, <laughs> no chance. I I doubt it. Yeah, he would. He would probably. One of them would have to just be fired. Like, yeah. and I don't know if ESPN is willing. Honestly, like, <laughs> I don't know if they're willing to get rid of Pat McAfee over Jimmy Kimmel right now. <laughs> I will not comment on that. I will just detour it, pivot or pivot it over yeah. to. Did you see? Uh, Moist Critical and crew were having uh, bets going on on who's on the list versus who's not. Really? Yeah, I found that. No, I haven't that was seen that. I watched a clip of that. That was hilarious. And I was thinking, like, is there anybody? Is there anybody in your mind that you think is like one hundred percent there? Oh, in mine? On the list? Like, is there anybody that you think is like one hundred percent on the list? Dude, I said weeks ago. Remember when I said the redacted names are probably Trump and the Clintons? Oh yeah. Well, I mean that. No, okay, that's too yeah, easy. You can't. You can't go with them, and you can't go with like uh, Bill know. Gates. Too easy. Yeah, the one that I thought was interesting that someone pointed out, Bill Cosby. He's on there. We don't know, but I'm just saying, bet, he's one of the running odds favorites. I mean, is this list out? I keep seeing fake. Not ones. yet. No, the court keeps delaying it. Ah, uh, it's not coming. But <laughs> believe me, when it gets out, there will be. No avoiding it whatsoever. It will be plastered on every social media platform around the world. Yeah. I'm... I don't know. It's just like... It's going to be an interesting list because it's like... That's a lot of people. We already know who's on there. I've enjoyed more than anything the perma-political Twitter accounts. Like both sides saying it doesn't matter who's on there. We all need to just stand up and say it's a bad thing. And I was like, man, these people are so brave, dude. Can you imagine saying that someone who is linked to Jeffrey Epstein and hung out with him a lot isn't a good person? That takes a lot to stand up and say. <laughs> I was like, you people are so brave. <laughs> oh, my Where do you God. get your courage from? <laughs> oh, I love it. It, it, it's... it just killed me. <laughs> This is social media at its finest right now. Whenever both yeah. sides are just slinging shit and you, yeah. you don't know what way it's going to go. You just know everybody's <laughs> going to get covered. And that's yeah. all that matters. And that's it's. Uh, <laughs> I love it's it. Fi we finally have something to come together around. In we do. <laughs> and yet we're still fighting each other on it, which is yeah. hilarious. Everybody's represented well. <laughs> Everybody's got to see at the table. Everybody's getting a little bit yeah. of turkey, turkey and stuffing, and uh, well, stuffing in a different way as well. Yeah. When you go to jail, the world's richest, like child sex trafficking ring, has finally been stopped, and everyone's too busy debating. Oh, your guy's on it. <laughs> like instead of going, oh, that's really bad. Oh, yeah. That's really bad. They're like, hey, your guy's on it. You see that? <laughs> And that's just going to become a, a tally war between both sides. Yeah. Who ended up having more people on the list and whether yeah. that's, oh God. Whether they're worse. Yep. I think this should be, though, like the final nail in the coffin for like why Trump shouldn't, probably shouldn't be allowed to run again. <laughs> like, you would think not to be too political, not to be overly yeah. political, no, I, but you I would think. So. think this would be one of those things where, like, you know, yeah, you go, maybe this one is, like, a little too far <laughs> for a U.S. president. <laughs> also, for Sharpie's point, uh, I, I agree. I don't think it's stopped. I, th I do think, like, high people getting caught is a good thing regardless, but I agree. I don't think it's, like, fully stopped. It, I don't think anything like that ever would. Like, that's too well oh, yeah, yeah. flushed out of a system. But yeah. I, no, I agree. But I think that that opens up the door. And I know some people don't like politics. If you want to skip ahead, we'll have timestamps down below. Go ahead. But I, I briefly want to touch on this. 
do you think with Trump disqualified, who stands the best chance at beating Biden? Oh, from a Republican side? Yeah. I mean, they're probably going to send the Santas, I guess. I don't think so. I you think don't? I'm I've got all my money on them uh waiting for the moment to jump ship to Nikki Haley. Oh. I'm I'm 100% like she plays like when I went home for Christmas that she was the the talk of the town of everybody really? saying she is like the perfect middle ground of like you know huh. they there are a lot of people that don't like obviously how the Biden administration is going at least where I'm from is a very like red area. Trump did a bunch of rallies uh, in the Hershey area. And they all said the same thing of like, you know what, at this point, let the blue states be the blue states, let the red states be the red states, just make sure that we have our rights. And that's very, very much in line with like what Nikki Haley has been preaching. And because of that, like, I think she wins over independent voters in a way that we have not Mm. seen from a Republican candidate in a while that people were just sick of the like the national political divide and just want their their state d- their state to choose which that'd be interesting to be clear I... on my political point on that I don't think that should be the case because somebody being born in a state should not be a, it should not determine why you either have a shitty life or a good life like that shouldn't be a part of it and obviously uh whether people like this or not I'm voting blue no matter what uh I like I'm just politically left leaning. Sorry. That's what I would is. be Well, you're also in what Jersey or Yeah, I'm I well now that we're in New Jersey, York, our vote so... actually matters. But when oh, we it were does. when we were in New York, our vote didn't matter at all. Like, yeah, I was gonna were... say I'm in Indiana, my vote doesn't matter. Like are, are you guys full red or is it purple? We're pretty red. I think okay. the last time we went blue was for Obama. I I made a choice. So twenty twelve was the first year that I could vote. Uh had to vote absentee ballot PA because I was only down in North Carolina for like two months or something mm-hmm. like that. But 2016, uh, we spent half the year in North Carolina, half the year in PA. And we had the option, like Emily and I both had the option to vote for I- in either state. Uh, I think Pennsylvania went Trump and North Carolina went, went Hillary. I think we voted mm-hmm. in Pennsylvania, but like we, like, that was the first time and only time that I've ever felt like my vote actually made a difference on a national scale. Yeah, they, I mean, I would be, I would only be surprised if Nikki Haley actually won it because she says like some wild things. Oh, she does. But like, it's not any wilder than the other shit that we've heard from Republican candidates. So it's like, I don't know. Like I, I'm really like I Republican primary season as a independent voter that has no stakes in it whatsoever is my favorite time of the year because it's just like, it's a chicken fight that is just so much fun to watch because you don't know what the hell is going to happen. And it's just people like spewing shit at all around. And it's just like super Tuesday comes and I'm just glued to the TV because I want to know like, what is my conservative family like that side of the family going to say in the morning? Because I know certain people on cer- are on certain sides. Mm-hmm. My uncle is like a diehard Trump guy. My my dad and I call him like once a week and just be like, hey, yeah. you hear what happened this time? And he just starts going off. Fuck it replaces the word the and and is in his vocabulary and yeah. just starts going. They, well, I mean, that's the thing I think would kill a DeSantis win in like non-primary but against biden i think would kill it is because too many people like who loved trump would write him in yeah just because they hate desantis which i think desantis will be like the first dude ever to not win something just because of the way he walks like because he genuinely probably does think like most republicans or at least a good majority of them think yeah. I think he has most of them online because people, Republicans love Florida. Love it. They eat it up. And he's been just doing everything they could want. But he just talks and walks and acts because I ran out of ox words so odd. <laughs> and 
It's just like, dude, you can't... You just can't look or do things like that. But at the same time, Nikki Haley, like... Bro, the the Still amount denial of denial on the Civil War. I the amount I of Botox that she it. has, because like, have you watched her debates? Her forehead, like here up, never moves, ever. It stays dead still the entire I'm, time. She I'm like just more worried about the Civil War comment she made. Oh, I mean that too. Like, I, ever crazy. look there. There's Blood so much off. shit to be worried about with what Republicans yeah, gonna... say in these primaries. Jeez. It's that's why it's great to just watch it because it's like. Same thing, like tying this back into the legal edges. Like, we it the, we have no fucking say over anything. It's all controlled mm-hmm. by big interest anyway. So whether you vote blue or red ultimately means yeah. absolutely nothing, other than Supreme Court, which is the like main thing that I personally care about in like swinging uh, back to the left. But it's like mm-hmm. it it doesn't matter. So it's just like enjoy at this point. Enjoy the monkey show. Like, enjoy them being yeah. idiots on a national stage, and it's all going to go to hell no matter what, so fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically the best best argument you can have for it. To be clear to Nick, who was in the comments, team, vo- voting does mean something. It just doesn't mean what people think it means. You're not voting because, you know, Biden's promising that he's going to get student loan debt forgiven. And then all of us are going to walk out without loans. It's like, no, that's not what you're getting. You're not voting for that. You're voting for the off chance that you get a Supreme Court justice in your favor. And maybe a few like social agendas that don't get reverted in four years when a Republican candidate wins. Like That's, that's what that means. But... Yeah, and it depends on the state you're in. Because there's quite a few that are just... They are what they are. Yeah, the Although like, Texas is slowly turning over with all the Californians moving over there and other states. Yeah. Austin could turn Texas. I'd be curious to know if Miami <laughs> Date or like if Dade County ever flips Florida. Like for a single election, ever flips it. Because when was the last time Florida went blue? What? When's the last time Florida did? I yeah. Don't know. Did Florida go blue for Obama? I don't know. That's a great question. When was the last time it went blue? Dude, I... No, the Epstein files on Twitter are not real. No, not yet. I'm pretty sure it's all just alleged leaks, so... My guess is it's people photoshopping stuff for likes. Yeah, here we go. Both uh, Democrats have won Florida only five presidential elections. Uh... 1969, 1976, 1996, which was 96 was uh, Clinton, right? Because in 2020 was Al Gore versus Bush. They went Bush. And then 2008 and 2012. So Obama won both of the the years that he was on the ballot in Florida. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's why it's called the crossover podcast because we go into <laughs> fucking anything. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. And just be sure, please, uh, as a note to this to end the political conversation before we shift back in the league, please go register to vote. If you are of age, if you are 18 years old, uh, figure out the voting laws in your state and what you have to do to, uh, to make sure that you can get your ballot casted this year doesn't matter what party you're a part of just go vote it is one of the few times that you have a say in what happens in this country especially at a local level pay attention to your local politics pay attention to your state politics they tend to mean more than national but just go vote number one thing you can do is go vote in any scenario i feel like i did my american duty there to a certain (laughs) extent i mean i am wearing an american flag on the on the thumbnail of this podcast so that's true we did something there i don't feel like i owe america much more oh yeah military yeah you kind of you did your service i did what i came to do (laughs) oh god what do you want to go i feel like that's fair oh well no it is you put you put more on the line for this country than any of us will Arguably, well, it... I'm surprised you haven't yelled at me for wearing the flag like that because technically you're not supposed to. That doesn't matter. I don't think anybody, people who get mad at that, I think are stupid. 
Like, I don't. Yeah, he's, he's talking about you, MSG staff that yelled at us for ha- for wearing American flags. Did they really? Yeah, I had I had to stop wearing it after the second day. Why? Because uh, I guess a rule that like they don't allow flags to be flown for countries because it can create conflict. Whereas oh, they that's would... fair enough inside of that type of thing. Yeah, like I, I it's ultimately fair, and I'm just just, well, I'm... Tennessee uh, bar when we were in Tennessee for our fantasy football draft made me take off my Colts jersey. Because they said it's caused fights before. That's hilarious, and I love that. Yeah, they were like, yeah, people go in there, and they uh, they start, like, trash-talking each other, and then, because everybody's drunk, they just start throwing fists. And I was like, that's electric. And he was like, yeah, you gotta take it off. It is cool, though. <laughs> I was like, fair enough. That so I put great. it in my pocket, and he was like, do you promise you won't take it out? And I was like, gout's honor. And he let me go. <laughs> That's great. I love that. And I, I have no idea what Boy Scouts do, but it worked. So if I'll I, take it. If I see a Cloud9 fan in the bar next time <laughs> and we get drunk enough, I'm just going to make sure they know it's going down. Fisticals. <laughs> I was amazed because I was like, dude, we're, the, we're literally our division is called the Shit Mountain. Like, yep. who is fist fighting over Shit Mountain? <laughs> you got to be a true American sports psycho. Some, Start swinging. <laughs> some would say you're fisting the shit, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. Let's get back to League. At least talk about something related to League of Legends. You can pick whatever um, you want to go into. It's a good thing to talk about League of Legends. Good nuts. I don't know. The, I mean, is League even going to be around much longer? It will. Oil money, but <laughs> but what is your okay? I know we're still a couple weeks out. We got time, but who do you think legitimately challenges C nine? Now that we've had time to really let it sink in, how good their roster is. Who are we thinking? Shit, that's a tough question. Because I have them winning both splits. So I put out my, my 2024 predictions video today, which I don't, mm-hmm. did you see it or no? 2020. It wasn't on Twitter. Uh, so you might not have seen it. It was on Twitter? No, okay, it, it, was no. Not, it was not on Twitter. It was only on TikTok. Oh, not on Twitter? Yeah. Dude, hold up. I actually might have played this video, but then I got asked to do something. It's only on TikTok, so I doubt... Oh, it's only on TikTok? Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, I thought it was on YouTube. No, it's only on TikTok. My bad. No, oh. no. Okay. I don't have TikTok. I have four predictions for this year. And I'll, I'll let you, you grade them uh, based on that, and this will somewhat answer your question. Uh, Cloud9 is winning both splits. I don't think they're going to be a dominant team in the regular season. I think FlyQuest and NRG both look decent against top teams. Uh, But I think when best of fives come, I don't think anybody stops C9. I just think they're going to be too good in best of five series, and their adaptability between all of their players is just obnoxious. They've upgraded the two weak points that I had in M&S and Sven to Mm -hmm. Vulcan and Jojo Pune. And literally the only point that I can look at and say, yeah, this is a clear weakness now is Fudge. That's Mm -hmm. it. And even then, Fudge is still top two in the league. Yeah, I was going to say top two regionally at least. There's no world where I see them losing either split, barring a catastrophe. And if that happens, coaching is gone. Like, Or like some major change is happening. Because that should never in any world uh, be the case. My other three predictions, just to throw them out there. First, the LPL is winning MSI again. I think that double elimination just suits the LPL better. And they can bounce back better than uh, LCK teams can for whatever reason. Uh, G2 is making the semifinals at Worlds this year. There's something about... EU at Worlds that has a little bit of magic in the air. Uh, last Worlds, notably, all three European teams got out of group stage. 
Now, I don't think Europe has the that level of depth this time around, but I I'm willing to say that G2 fixes their their wrongs that they had this year, at least on the international stage, and makes a semi. And then the final one, my world's winner is Genji. I have no reason other than I just don't want to pick T1. So purely you don't because think LPL of, brings it back? Not by worlds for what mm. I I don't know. I just I for some well, reason usually, they they keep collapsing at worlds that as usually of the the metas in my opinion are more LPL favored mid season and then slowly move towards what Koreans traditionally like by worlds. Yeah. I've noticed that. So yeah, but, that that's all of mine. Is there any way that you think challenges C9? Is there a way that they don't win both of these? Your C9 winning both splits? Maybe there could be an argument. Like, well, there's only two this season. Still, they're not doing three. We have no clue. Okay. But NRG definitely can push them, I think. NRG can. TL has a very interesting roster this year. I would say they've, like, really fixed some of their holes. Like, top lane not enjoying anybody on the team is now fixed. Uh, um, T speaks English, so that kind of fixes that problem. <laughs> they can actually communicate, you know, with their mid later. Yep. I think that's going to be a pretty big deal. Uh, I don't know if they they win one. The question for me is if C9 can keep that consistency all year this time. That's why I think they struggle in regular split, though. Well, the my main worry is, like, for them right now is burnout. Only because of the fact they're pushing this different contract, right? They yep. talked about it a lot, so it seems like a big deal to them. And historically, they have not been good at staying consistent through both splits. Now, they've ended years well still. I Maybe it's not burnout, but they seem to just lose their minds in summer at some point. Or just boredom. I don't know what it is, but summer splits uh, lately have been a little more difficult for them than they used to be. Well, don't worry. So, summer splits going to be shorter now because of the Saudi event. Interesting. And there's that money in between to motivate C9. <laughs> Yeah, but once you get paid fat stacks, are you really gonna come back and grind? Fair, fair. Maybe they fall. Maybe they fall <laughs> yeah. harder in summer now because of that. Yeah, as you're long right. as they get, as long as you're in top three and their floor is top three, yeah. like who cares for them? You know what I mean? Like who honestly cares? <laughs> That's fair. Their their winnings from a Saudi tourney like that or getting like top four would probably be as much as their salary, bro. Like, probably. So who cares if it's not winner take all? Like, I would. I'd be. I just come back and be like, yeah, dude, I get the contract says this, but I've already been paid my salary. Like, I don't know, bro. Yep. I'm chilling. Now I did see your video about like, uh, or your tweet was it about like it should be scaring JoJo if oh, cheap yeah. rosters win games? Yeah. Because like high paid people need to really curb stomp these teams that aren't getting paid as much. And it makes you wonder because NRG last year wasn't really in NRG this year has not been saying that they're big spenders no. and they, and they've been pretty open about it and they seem like a, a tough beat. Like even this year, they're going to be a pretty tough beat. Like, I mean, I think they'll be good. And yeah. I think they'll be like clear, like top two or three, especially to start off the year. The thing that I have worry for NRG is the same thing that I worried about 100 Thieves after our win in summer is at at some point you do have a fall off mm -hmm. and it, it just naturally, or you have like a ceiling that you can't overcome. Like you, you keep going up, you peak, like I'd say the 100 Thieves roster got a little bit better too in 2022 relative to 2021, but everybody else around you gets better as well. And eventually they surpass you. So for NRG, my worry is like, yeah, I think spring is like, they have to perform in spring. 
But Summer is going to be a big question mark for me. A big, big question mark. Yeah. Can those guys all still stay with it? Like, do you need a change? Yeah. Do you need something to shake up the culture at all? I mean, luckily, who he coming in helps for sure. But like, everything else is mostly the same. And at some point, you know, you you can't stay on top forever. So we'll see. I think them getting challenged in spring would actually be the best thing for them because it would just make them like it would force them to immediately hop off the pedestal and just climb back up. Yeah. No, it would. Yeah. <laughs> I think you were perfectly there. And I, I also feel kind of the same way about Vulcan. Like, we've been calling him an upgrade, but he is an upgrade with an asterisk. Yeah. Like, he has a lot to prove. Because the man talked a lot. And then showed up to FlyQuest. And I get there was some issues inside of that team. But you can't choke the way they choked. And he's the only major change. Yep. And people not look at you and go, what happened there? Like, dude was... And he was like... I'm trying to think of how to say. It. Like, his persona or the idea of what he was doing towards the middle of the season of like making Cancun jokes so early... It was kind of awkward to me. I didn't really love that. That's no, not like a good culture fit in a team that wants to be the best, you know? That a team that's saying they're going to win two splits back to back, that just seems awkward. Agreed. To get a guy who is like trash talking people and then like when the trash talk, when he quit winning, got so nervous about his trash talk that he just got off Twitter the rest of the split. That's bad. Like, didn't eat anything. Like, I don't remember him like saying like, "Oh man, Ayla got the best of me." No, he didn't say shit. Like he, yeah, like, it was a Ayla buried him. Like that yeah. was one of the most brutal Twitter takedowns that I've seen in a long time in esports between like yeah. player to player. And he and Ayla wasn't really starting it. That's the awkward part. Like yeah. when a dude who you decide to go after just kind of takes it to you, like it kind of kills your vibe. So I think he's in a lot of trouble. Like, And yeah. nobody's going to like cheer for him or be nice to him now. Because at least if you're not a fan of him. Yeah. For me, at least. Because I'm sitting here going like, okay, you've just joined the best team in the league again. Like, if you struggle, I'm going to be a little hard on you. Because, one, you already have known to kind of be a little psycho trash talky. Like, his trash talk wasn't even really like trash talk. It was starting to just get weird yeah. to me. So it'll be interesting. But luckily for him, that roster is Omega talented in the <laughs> other four roles. So it could just not matter. And the thing is, like, Vulcan has a mechanical floor that's still better than most. Like, even oh, though sure. even though he's coming in for on sure. a slump, and I agree, it's cause for concern. Like, he's still a top three or four support in my mind. Like, in terms of hands alone, he's top two. We know that. But like in terms yeah. of just it all being together, sure he's slumping right now. But if he yeah. cut, if he does come back to form, it's over for the league. It's sure. literally over. There's not a better ADC than Berserker when he's hit when yeah. he's on. There's not a better support than Vulcan when he's on in the league. Jojo Pune is the best mid laner in the LCS. Like mm -hmm. he was dragging that EG roster to playoffs, and like mm -hmm. people are gonna say Palafox, sure, but again, like. This is Patrick Mahomes playing without an offensive line versus Patrick Mahomes now playing with like the studded Chiefs. Like that's exact like that's what we're talking about here. Blabber, yeah. I could be a little bit coin flip, sure, but like Blabber when he's on is the goat and Fudge, we've already said, like even at his worst, he's top two. So Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll be it'll probably be fine for them. Like I don't see Vulcan sucking. It's just that, like, if he does, it's gonna be weird because I don't know where they pivot. I don't. And know. I don't know what they do, but I don't think it'll matter in the end. Like this conversation is probably a mute point because they're so talented in other places. So who cares? I agree. <laughs> like Blabber can just make up for all his flaws, <laughs> type of deal. Agreed. So it won't matter. I'm curious. Do you wish lock-in tournament was still a thing? Uh, 
No, not really. Really? I what? didn't care about it that much. Okay. I just don't, I'm not a, like, I don't need League of Legends that bad that I need, like, a tournament that doesn't matter to me. It's kind of like one of those things where it's like, yeah, if we win this, it's good. If we don't, I'm probably not watching. Is that, I'm trying to think what distinguishes that, though, from, like, Spring Split and, like, the really long, the really long season that is. Because I, for me at least, I would like a shorter, I mean, if I had my choice, mm-hmm. it would be three splits, and then we do, like, one split is lock-in tournament, like a fully flushed out, like, double elim tournament as well. Uh, one is, like, a single round robin into, like, or, I, I don't know, you can manage it however you want. I just wish it was, yeah. like, three splits with that format, but, like, I just, spring feels really long like the regular season lately has just been feeling really long for me Mm -hmm. yeah i can feel that because i get spring people don't care about but like the finals at least and they want that third split because they see you doing it and it looks like fun but i'm kind of cool with the longer seasons because i'm other sports fans anyways so i don't really care that much and now that we're back down to eight teams it's pretty easy to digest like four games a day it's not too bad but at the same time they're probably gonna have to move to a three split system anyways at some point because uh riot general wants to move to this three split system and it's just gonna be how it is like i don't know if the first one has to be attorney though like lock in i don't know how you make the first one matter because i'm not gonna lie the lec ones like none of their finals felt like they mattered Agreed. So here's here's what you do, and here's my plan. And here's what I think Riot's going for as well. Winner split lock-in tournament for the LCS. Single round robin, best of ones, uh, split into two, like the four groups split into two, and it's purely for seeding. That's all you're doing. And then you go into a full A-team double elimination bracket. Top two teams from the tournament go to MSI. That's your winner tournament. Mm-hmm. Summer. Uh, we do a or sorry spring we do a regular like like we are used to double round robin into top six uh playoff uh double like the format that we do with like double elimination as is already in spring uh because then you're playing between 18s you're playing 14 games so it's not all that much uh and not everybody's there so playoff format's a little bit reduced and you're kind of making it a little bit more competitive there then that's fine then for the top two teams there, assuming the eSports World Cup or whatever it is, assuming that's the format there, top two teams uh, that win that split go to the event there. And then you have Summer. I'm not sure what format I want to go with for Summer. For Worlds, I think eventually they're going to collapse like the LLA and stuff like that into the LCS. Uh, But like you do... I don't know, a single round robin best of three instead of best of one or like double round robin best of ones. And the top six teams get in, but it's filled out as well by two additional teams from like the LLA that get in as like the seventh and eighth seeds and have to battle their way up. That would actually be really cool. I'd like that. But that again, do you think they're willing to yes. bring in those teams? Yes, I think they are because they're already doing it in other regions. And it's clear that they want to eventually merge the Americas. You then have three. You have three distinct uh, seasons, or like three distinct splits, with unique mm-hmm. formats for all of them, with in- international implications for every single season. So all of them matter, and there's always money on the line at the international events that you can go to get skins and additional revenue for yourself and everything else. Like there's not that way. There's not a single split that doesn't matter. It gives mm-hmm. you the possibility for three road shows if you want, and you can make two of them smaller scale to save money, and then one of them obviously like full scale uh, in summer. But I think that gives the entire year more value than what it has right now. That's fair enough. Yeah, because that would that completely kill needing a playing stage at Worlds. Kinda. Like, in which isn't a bad thing. I don't think that's bad because 
realistically, if you can kill plans and make NA still have four seeds, but it's now Americas, right? So all Brazil or uh, LAN, it's LAN, right? Uh, LLA. LLA. LLA has to do is be top four in the Americas tournament. Like, that would be fine. Because if all you have to do is be top four out of all those LCS teams, I think that's a fair ask of yeah. a team to go to Worlds. Like, you should have to be top four here. Like, there's no reason. Who was our fourth seed last year? GGS. Yeah, Golden right? Guardians. Yeah, there's no reason that Brazil or LLA should be upset that they have to beat a Golden Guardians level team. And even then, you could still technically keep playing stage, but you expand the amount of teams that come from the Americas and Europe yeah. and everybody. Like, your, your play in tournament becomes instead of just like. Instead of it just being, uh, you know, the top three teams, it's the top five because you've consolidated regions and the playoffs, you know, have like more teams. You give it more of a chance, obviously, to have like teams from different regions. And then the play ins matter because, similar to like how it used to be whenever like some of the four seeds, like DRX last year, what, or well, two years ago now, was in play in stage, like you could have like a fifth seed from the LCK or China that just randomly gets the meta in their favor and just fucking runs a train yeah. on the tournament. Like, and that could happen, but like you give more teams possibility and like odds are they're still not going to win it, but I don't want five seeds from one region though. I think five seeds from one region is fine. If you have multiple regions with, or if you have like multiple things within that, so like five yeah, seeds, maybe. five seeds from North America is not bad. If you're going to have three North America and two Brazilian. It's bad if it's five North American, yes. But at the yeah, same yeah. time, I I'm biased. And I'll speak, you know, I'll say this for the LEC, so it's not as biased. Uh I would rather see like EU when they're I mean, they're pretty much already consolidated at this point. So actually no, I'll just stick to North America. It's the only applicable example. North America, I'd rather see our fourth and fifth seed go if it makes play ins more entertaining. Than watching Lao get their shit pushed in. But yeah, because Lao has a chance to play against those teams. And if they can't beat them and qualify them, then shit. Yeah, I just don't want five seeds from regions because, like, at that point, you're letting in, like, where's the prestige of worlds, you know? Like, it, four is already 40% of some of these. I mean, I agree, but the point is that playoffs, like, 50 you're you're not saying, I get it's 50% of those regions, but in theory, it's 50% of those regions because those regions were able to take out what was historically the play-in teams. Yeah, and ours would be even higher. If yeah. we had five seeds, that'd be so stupid. You could be a fifth seed in a team, in an eight-team region, like... But... At, I get it. You're saying from an A team region, but I'm thinking of it from the yeah, perspective yeah. of it's not tech. Like at that point, if you're consolidating playoffs, it's not an A team. Yeah, region. I get you. It's a 16 team region because yeah, you're taking the A teams from there, and then yeah, yeah, one. I get you. So in the grand scheme I of things, you are sure. take you you still are taking like the top X percentage because what three out of eight? Let me do this math. Let me pull up the calculator before I speak out of my ass. Three out of eight. We are sending 37.5% of our league. Okay. If we sent five out of 16 because Brazil has eight and we have eight, that's 31%. You're actually sending less of like the overall region. Well, don't we send four still? Or are we sending three now? I would, ass I would assume we're sending three. We're surely not sending four, right? In a fucking eight team region, there's no way we're sending four. You underestimate their power. <laughs> fair fair <laughs> not gonna fight you on that one well you gotta think though it's more competitive teams because by getting rid of two teams we've consolidated the talent <laughs> so we have more talented eight teams oh god <laughs> do we though do we yeah well energy beating g2 if they get four, we get four. Yeah, but those are one seeds. Like, no, I, that that's the problem. Our fourth like, seed got cooked. I was gonna say well, yeah. we got <laughs> bitch slapped. 
by like, yeah. G2, sure. Like we we played well against them on an off day for them. Like uh, that's not to diminish our win. Like we won that fair and square. Yeah. But like when you're starting to compare depth and we have a clear example of like Golden Guardians getting like like Simpsons level bullied by BDS and Adam, no. But like he's right by technically by Riot's standard. Yeah, we it's get done by how far your best team gets. Oh, you're not fuck, you're not wrong. Yeah, we get He's right. We're like by fair. their standard. We keep four and they don't. If they want to lower the amount of teams sent, like he is right by their standards, technically. Bro, Hunter Thieves, he, regardless legit, of what we think, Hunter Thieves has a legitimate chance of making worlds. No way, <laughs> no way. That's great. All we have to do is beat have Shopify. To be top four. Assuming Crazy dude. Well, Shopify and Team Liquid. Crazy. Like that's absolutely wild. That. You gotta really think why would TSM leave a region that they could 50% of the time make worlds? Hear me out. TSM left it because they're getting Saudi money to form their own Saudi region. <laughs> which will then feed in to worlds because of all the consolidation that's happening elsewhere. Eat, I might have to actually quit at that point <laughs> and give it up. You might. <laughs> Does Reggie like, hate, does Reggie hate the LCS so much that he would take Saudi money just to go and screw him? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he'll probably be the first ever like Saudi owned LPL team. Wow, I didn't even think about that. That would be so TSM to do. Yeah. Wow. Oscar will be our, uh, what is it? Our head of head of like esports management or something oh god and it'll just be so depressing or ocelot i was good i was wondering who you met with dude. oscar but you know my bad ocelot that'd be so sad dude could you imagine oh. I, the sad thing is i could i could very easily imagine that which is terrifying yeah yeah i could too that's what uh, i'm worried about thinking about it the only other thing I was gonna men or I was gonna have us talk about, uh, I was gonna have us talk about LCS fantasy, but that uh, is back on with Sleeper, and I will just say there are some fairly large improvements that I would like to see with fantasy. I don't think our fantasy product is in the best spot right now, but I mm -mm. uh, hopefully that happens. Will it happen? I don't even know why they bother running it. Really. I mean, it's not fun to play, like, the way they run it. It's just not fun at all. The system, like, I don't like the way the system is uh, designed. I don't know. I it, do, it does not feel the same as fantasy football whatsoever. And I don't know why no. exactly. I don't know if you're able to, like, put words to it better than me, but, like, it feels demonstrably worse than fantasy football. I mean, it's because of the bands thing. If you didn't have to do the pick bands thing, like, and you just, you know, pick the player that you picked without the energy of hoping that you, like, can guess what an LCS team's uh, plan is for their draft, like, could you probably guess it by, like, just reading about their team and seeing what they like to do? Sure, but then there's that one week where their team decides to do something different, and you don't have every rumor <laughs> under the sun available to you, so you miss it, and you're just like, whatever, dude. Like, there's no one ball, and then there's trying to guess what a head coach wants to do with the ball. <laughs> like, imagine if football had a button where you had to pick the over-under on carries for your running back every week. You know how stupid that would be? Yeah, that'd be bad. And catches... You had to be like, oh, I think he'll get more than seven, I guess. And if I get it wrong, then it's just over. I just, I also want carryover. I don't know. Do you guys do carryover in your fantasy leagues? I'm in one dynasty league. Okay. The other ones I'm in have, you get to keep one player. Cause I freaking love uh, like the dynasty concept of like keeping a player. 
that would mean a lot yeah. to me. Like, I want to be able to keep my highest performing player. Yeah. And if you want to pass it fair. up, like, if you want to forego it, fine, you can. But mm-hmm. especially given how, like, rapidly uh, rosters change within the LCS. But, like, I don't know. I think that's... I I would pick Sniper and just stick with it forever and gatekeep him for the next 15 years. He'll forever be mine. I mean, they... Yeah, they need to just fix it, dude. It's not that hard to fix or asking for. Oh, it, I swear it's got to be pretty easy. Like, to not make me have to randomly pick a champ and hope I pick the right one. I don't know. I do not know. A little bit shorter episode this week. I know we didn't really have too much to to talk about. I mean, luckily we had the Saudi deal thing happened which made the majority of the conversation here uh is there anything else that we're missing uh chat feel free to chime in as well before we log off i know this is a shorter one but i will also say next week should be a fun one uh we are bringing in our entire low budget lcs team for the podcast is it going to be a dunking on me probably but we're going to have a lot of league stuff to talk about, including the cinematic will probably be out next week whenever the season uh, finally launches yeah. on Tuesday. I will finally be playing the game again. Paul will finally be playing the game again. Uh, in terms, of, Well, have you been playing solo queue? I did until I started losing and then I just gave up. Okay. So Paul's not been playing solo queue either. It's going to be fun. But... Until then, we're just in a holding pattern. Six more days until things finally start happening. And to be clear, it'll be the whole team with subs and Brandon. I may or may not have forgot forgotten to uh, list Brandon's name whenever <laughs> I sent out the thing. Uh, so for those that don't know, our full roster is going to be myself and Paul uh, in bot lane. I'm ADC. He's support. Healy is returning as our jungler. Blue, aka other Nick, is also returning as mid laner. And our top lane is going to be none other than the OG optic uh, coach, the toxic uh, man himself. Reformed. Reformed toxic man himself, Fail Asian, aka Mason. I feel like even saying Fail Asian in general is opening me, opening me up to a lot of problems, but I will still say it anyways because that's his name. Uh, they are there. Zebra, Kento, and Brandon are subs for subs for the season. They'll be in as well. We are in uh, financial. Financial? Yes. Yeah, we are in financial well, again. We've applied for financial. We should be able to get in. We hope to. Yes. We hope to bring a lot of publicity to the league <laughs> uh, and offer value that you know makes us an attractive a uh, team to bring in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think it'll be fun. We'll get Paul's early predictions on how he thinks the year is going to go. Diss each other's champion pools. Diss each other in general. Uh, anything else I'm forgetting on the outro before we sign it off for today? Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think. Anything else for the outro? Oh, one final question. Do the Col- oh. do the Colts make the playoffs? Yeah, they're going to beat the Texans. They always do. Uh, do the Steelers the... get in if they win? Is it just a win? If the Colts win? win? No, the Ste- I, do the Steelers control their own fate, or are they relying upon somebody else losing? I know they don't control their own fate. I don't know how they get in. Because I know they have to beat Baltimore, but Baltimore is probably going to be resting all their starters. So that's. I think we have to lose for the Steelers to get in. Can the Bills lose as well? And yeah, can... but that doesn't get the Steelers in. The Bills are two games ahead of them. Ah, uh, okay. So it's literally just between the Colts and the Steelers at this point, basically. And the Texans. If the Texans, well, I don't well, know. Yeah, because one of you two wins and then goes up to a. No, nah, let me see. Give me a sec. I need to make sure. It is the Bills. If the Bills lose, then and the Texans win, then the Steelers get in. Yes. 
So the Bills lose. Okay. Okay. By the way, I think the Epstein list is out. Or is it Jax? It might be Jax. Have to lose as well. I don't know. There's a way the Steelers get in, dude, but it's like so convoluted and messy. I don't know how it happens. Uh huh. You're never going to believe who's on the Epstein list. Is it really out? It's apparently. Are you going back to this, Steve? My sister just texted me. It is apparently out. Uh huh. You're you're never gonna if I if I tell you I'll give you one hint. Wheelchair. Wheelchair. Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking is apparently on the Epstein. It's not even a surprise. Stephen Hawking was known like. Are you serious? I uh, did not know that. No, no, not like a known sexual predator, I guess. But he was a known like sexual deviant. Oh. He cheated. He left his wife for his caretaker. Huh. And his caretaker was married, and they got married. Huh. So him and his caretaker cheated on each other. Dude, he was like, I ain't gonna say he kind of earned his way into that wheelchair, but I wouldn't say he was the best man in the world. <laughs> Your Twitter like, remains undefeated. Stephen Hawking on. <laughs> you remember that Family Guy? Uh, uh, no, you've, never mind. What the family guy Stephen Hawking, uh, clip out of context? No, I'm trying to see where's the actual list, dude. I'm not Dude, all these news sites asking me all, to say all I'm that. seeing right now is memes, just nothing but memes. Anyways, I don't want to bore everybody on the podcast while we look up this list, but nevertheless, we're gonna head out so that we can uh talk about this off stream. Uh, catch you all on next week's episode this Saturday. I'm gonna be doing a video going over 100 Thieves and my uh just honest predictions and what we should be expecting as fans of split, and that's about it. So we'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll catch you later. Adios.